Hi there. I am Roman Wilcox. I'm the chef and the owner, or well, part owner, of uh, One Grub Community. We are a 100% plant-based uh, diner here in El Paso, and we're also a, a stand at the farmer's market. And we are branching out into our nonprofit, Planty for the People, and are just trying to become a station of food access here in central El Paso for our city. Um, long story short, basically. We just want to bring food access to all of El Paso through our food, through our gardens, through our community service and, and all the things we do. And today I've been lucky enough to ask to cook uh, something for you guys. So we're going to make uh, two things. We're going to make cashew alfredo, uh, which is one of the very first things that we made as a business in our food market stand. And from that, we are going to make a verdolaga, a garden verdolaga and um, calabacitas from, from our garden. So ingredients we have are cashews, raw, okay? We take them and we soak them in water overnight, at least one or two hours if you have it. If you don't have that time, you can take hot boiling water and pour them over and give them half an hour and it should do. Um, here we just have like 10 pounds at a time soaking. It's just the norm. And then we have our beautiful verdolaga, um, which is known as purslane as well. It grows in most yards here in El Paso and people just uh, pluck it and chuck it. And we actually cultivate it and grow it. We sell it at the farmer's market and we put it in our food. We use it raw, we use it cooked. Um, we have our first little squash that came from our garden, which is really exciting. Uh, these two are like just teeny tiny. Um, but they needed a good home, so I figured today would be a good thing. And then, what else? Uh, time. We have time from our garden, and uh, the rest of our ingredients we have are some chopped onion, garlic cloves, I uh, have some fresh parsley hanging around, kosher salt, white pepper, and my favorite nutritional yeast flake, the nooch. Um, other things we have, just water. I have a blender. Saute pan, sauce pot. That's all you need to make our cashew fredo and our verdolaga. So let's get started, yeah? Okay, so to start, let's make our cashew alfredo. So we have our soaked cashews. We got an onion, a full onion. Chopped it down, just a rough chop. Um, and then I have garlic cloves, which are good to go. And then I have a saute pan that's been sitting here on the heat, so it's already super hot, okay? A uh, good secret to a good saute is a hot pan, cold oil, in our case, hot pan, no oil, okay? We're being completely and totally oil-free on this recipe. Uh, basically just taking something that's recognizable, uh, that's relatable to our city and our food and our culture and just cleaning it up. So we're removing any processed oil. And so at the end of this, this is actually considered what's called a whole food plant-based meal. Um, but it's also, you know, uh, squash and verdolagas with crema, like how we know here in El Paso, it's nice. All right, so onions. We're gonna throw that guy in there and hope that they make the saute pan. Okay, and this is a very uncomfortable thing for people is to like throw onions in a pan without oil. Like that makes people very uncomfortable I've come to find. And so um, you get over it over time. Okay, uh, I don't always cook oil free, but when I do it's usually for work <laughs> and I try to incorporate it at home and at the end of the day, I really come to find out that it still has flavor, it still has richness. We're using cashews, which is like one of the fattiest nuts, right? And so, so I mean, it's still gonna have that richness and that mouth feel uh, the fattiness that we need. It's just not coming from a processed place, it's all natural. So, if we look here, there is caramelization happening. We don't need oil for that. We're gonna leave that be. If it gets a little too hot, you can always deglaze with a little bit of just water or vegetable broth or white wine, depending on what you're doing. And now I'm just taking our garlic cloves that have been cleaned up and I'm doing a super rough chop. This is all gonna be uh, pureed. So I wanna kinda do it big so that way I can get a little 
color and char on the garlic without it burning and tasting nasty and bitter. Okay, so garlic is going in there. Like I said, it's a full onion and at least like between a quarter and a half cup of garlic. It's really up to you how much garlic you want to put. But uh, I like the garlic. I think it's yummy. So I'm putting a lot. Okay. So my pan's getting real hot now. So I'll bring it down and just continue to move it because I don't want to burn. I do want some color on there, but I don't want to burn. I have some water and I'm just gonna lightly deglaze. That takes some of the color or the fond off the bottom of the pan and puts it and reintroduces it right back into your onion and garlic. All what, oh my gosh. It must be because I'm filming, but the onion is just flying everywhere. And there goes another one. All right, so what we're looking for here is that everything, our onions start getting nice and clear, but we're not there yet. You see some big white pieces of onion, plus you also smell the garlic kind of raw smelling. We're gonna get that down to where it starts sweetening up and it smells a little more roasted, okay? And in the meantime, while we're doing that, we can drain off our cashews and kind of start preparing for that. So I have my cashews. They're just soaking in water. So I have them out. And these guys are really soft when you soak them and they're like, they like double in size. They really do uh, puff up and get swollen full of that water. And what happens is that when you break it down, you really wanna make sure that you have a really high quality, high speed blender. We don't use anything less than a Vitamix just because we're using the cashew cream and stuff like our queso and all our different stuff. And so we really just make sure that it's like super creamy with using a high speed power blender, okay? Um, you can use a home style blender too. You just really wanna make sure that they're soaked well and just try to get it as creamy as possible. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. No oil, but it still has that color. It's looking good. It's starting to smell a little sweeter. Things are getting, the onions are getting clear on me. Okay, so I'm putting it back on. I'm gonna add some water. And this is basically our flavor base for, for the cream sauce. So I'm gonna take salt, white pepper, nutritional yeast, you could always use granulated onion, granulated garlic if you don't have the fresh stuff around um, or use it all together. If you want to go Cajun, you can put Old Bay in there and make like a Cajun cream sauce. You could put a pesto in it and make it a pesto cream. Uh, you can actually use it as a base for like cream soups. You want to do like a baked potato cream soup, use this as your cream instead of heavy cream and already you're just making it cleaner and healthier that way. So I'm gonna put a few pinches of salt. Remember this is like a concentrate, so it's gonna feel kind of salty right here. But once we add our cashews and it stretches out, it'll be a little bit more normalized. Nooch, this stuff adds creaminess, nuttiness, uh, nuttiness uh, silky texture, a lot of umami, just it's very high in glutamates, so it gives a lot of depth. So we use that in our cream sauces. It works really well. All right, and then white pepper. Little rule of thumb is that it stretches further than black pepper. So whatever you'd use in black pepper, you kind of just pull back a little bit for white pepper. I gotta run off and get a tasting spoon. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm just looking for balance and flavor with the exception that this is a little, it's gonna be kind of salty because it's a concentrate. Mm. 
It's a little salty, but that's okay for now. <laughs> All right, so basically onion, garlic, a little water. You could use white wine in this case if you wanted to. I'm just keeping it super simple. And then we have salt, pepper, nooch, right? I'm gonna stick this in our blender. Take a little more water, just get all that good stuff that's in my pan. If you wanted to develop the flavor other ways, you could do mirepoix, like right? carrot, onion, celery, puree that, use that as a soup base. Um, there's just a lot of directions you can do with this very simple thing. From this very simple base, we transformed it and started making our chili con queso, which is like one of our most popular things that we sell at farmer's market and in the diner. We also uh, transformed and made it into like vegan clam chowder soup and stuff like that. So it's just, I can't impress how versatile this is. So we have our concentrate ready to go. We have our water We're gonna take our cashews. There we go. So with these blenders, these high powered blenders, you always start at low speed and work your way up. And then before you turn it off, you work your way down as well, just because they're pretty, pretty strong. So we'll start at low and just kind of start grinding our stuff down. And once it's all like even sized, then we're gonna crank it for like a minute and make sure it's completely smooth. And then I'll shut up. So. We can do it, here we go. So, this should taste pretty good. We can go back and adjust it. At this point, if I was doing an Alfredo, I would add uh, like a little bit of fresh nutmeg because that's a, or not fresh nutmeg, but fresh uh, ground nutmeg. Um, Cause that's a really uh, prominent flavor in a traditional Alfredo and go that route. Um, we're not gonna do that since we're just kind of doing a traditional like uh, crema, that you would see here in El Paso to go over our yummy squash. All right, camera people, you're gonna taste this. Get off the cameras. It's riding that wave, guys. We're riding that wave. I think we're right there. So that's not cooked, okay? So as you can see, it's, it's already flavor. It's got, it's got good stuff. This texture will actually, we're gonna add heat to it, to slow heat, and what'll happen is all that cashew that's broken down will just kind of open itself up and soften up and it turns from that nice texture to this really smooth and thick and velvety texture. So, got a little pot right here. All right. All right, first recipe down. Okay, all we're gonna do with this is Put it on low heat. We'll let it simmer to where it just about wants to come to a boil. Once it hits that point where it wants to boil, we'll keep it low and we'll let it go for about 10 minutes. You'll watch it thicken up on its own. And this shouldn't need any starch or any thickener at this point. It should be thick enough to use as a sauce. Um, once you start getting into making like cashew cheeses and things like that, starches and thickeners take place and it goes different directions. But with this one, you don't need to, so which is really cool because that means there's nothing processed in it. It's a whole food plant-based uh, sauce. Okay, so I have it over like medium for now. As soon as it gets warm, I'll bring it down to simmer. Sorry. And then I'm gonna prep for 
our verdolagas and calabacitas. Cool? Okay, so now we're gonna get together the prep for our calabacitas and uh, verdolagas and crema. All right, so we have our stuff here. I already got ahead of the game a little bit and started julienning some onion. So we've sliced it, diced it, the little root end, I'm gonna detach it. Okay, that goes in the compost. Try not to waste here. We try to compost all our scraps and it goes right back into our garden. And then I'm just gonna follow the natural form in the, of the onion and just get a nice thin julienne. All right, so that's a whole onion. For what I'm making, I'm probably not gonna use a whole onion, but I got it here anyways. Okay, now it's time for our second dish. So we are going to make verdolagas and calabacitas and crema. And we have beautiful stuff from our garden that I just can't wait to share with you guys. All right, we uh, julienned our onion, okay, garlic, I actually kind of like having some substantial pieces in there that you that aren't hidden. I brought out the microplane because I was going to kind of break it down, but I wanted a little more. What's the term that we cooks use when we want to make it chunky? Rustic. Rustic is the term, I think. And so we're just going to make this more rustic in our garlic, okay? Again, we're gonna do oil-free with this, guys. Now, I'm not oil shaming. We do use oil in the, gar in the garden, I'm sorry, in the diner and in our food. But there are folks that choose oil-free diets, and it's really hard for those folks to go out and eat. And instead of being like, ah, stay home and cook, I wanna create an avenue for them where they have a comfy place that they can enjoy themselves and have something, and it brings a challenge to me because if I'm not using fat, I have to use herbs and seasonings and aromatics to bring that fullness of flavor, so. All right, so, hey, let's look at our cream sauce. You take a look at our cream sauce, it's clearly, it's thickened up, okay? So now it's gone from like cashew milk to this lovely, thick, savory cream, and it makes me want to make a cream of mushroom soup from it right now. I don't know why. Anyways, that's ready to go. I have my same saute pan that we sauteed our onions and garlic on. We're gonna get that nice and hot. We're gonna first add our onions, then our garlic, then our squash, then lastly our verdolaga, okay? Super easy. While that gets hot, we're gonna cut up these little guys. Use a little knife for my little guys. These are so small, I'm just gonna use their natural shape. So this we plucked like 10 minutes ago. So, I mean, it doesn't get any fresher than that. That's really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and quarter him and do this very, I want this to feel uh, just like how we do in the diner, we don't want people to walk, we want them to feel like this is something that, you know, that their parents could have made them or their tia or, or, or their grandma that likes to cook all kinds of stuff, but it's like they went and they learned how to cook really healthy, the same food that they always knew. That's how we want them to feel. So, so you know, my cuts and all that stuff, they're, they're, they're loose, um, they're comfortable. I don't know, um, it, just, it just works for the style and environment that we're doing here. So, have my hot pan, you grab some onions. They have that little sizzle sizzle, put it next to the mic so you can hear the sizzle. All right, 
so that's going. Squash is ready. Now for our purse lane or verdolagas. Let me move this over. Okay, so these guys, one of my favorite ways to cook these is kind of like southern style greens, like collard greens and mustards where you let them go real slow and, and um, you know, put, make them nice and smoky and rich in flavor. And when I do that, I leave these big pieces of stem in there. But when I'm doing something a little bit like a quick saute, I go ahead and just put these in the compost. Or you save them and then you put them in your morning smoothie. And you have a breakfast purse lane smoothie, which is good for you and helps reduce waste. So I'm just gonna pluck a couple of these guys real quick while our onions back there are getting some color, okay? You'll see some of these are, they're beautiful. They got those big stems, which aren't as appetizing to eat when they're quickly sauteed. If it's like strong enough to hold on, it's probably like strong, too strong to like munch on that delicate. So, you know, the, sturdy parts to stay behind. All right, so we got a nice little pile of our verdolaga. We got our squash. Let's check out our onions. Pan's getting super hot, getting some color on it. We're gonna use that color. Kinda help impart that color over here. And you'll see our onions start getting that nice caramelization that we're looking for. And all that water will just evaporate and we'll get, we'll get to the sauteing all over again. Garlic. All right. Other things you can use instead of verdolagas. The most traditional, people put sweet corn in here, right? Um, you could do fresh tomato if you're into that. There's all other sorts of quelites that you come out of the ground that you can use in there. I'm just gonna run real loosely my knife across the top of this. And this goes in at the very end, so it just still has a delicate bite to it, okay? We're just about ready. Yeah, we're ready for squash. So I'm gonna put my squash in there. There goes the squash. Oh, no, here we go. As for me, I like my squash to cook to where, just like the center where the seeds are, start to become soft, but the outer part still has a good bite to it. Um, and also just residual heat will continue to cook squash because it's kind of delicate that way. So you want to keep that in mind. You don't want to cook it all the way to the point to where you feel like it's good for you because what will happen is as it sits, it'll continue to cook and then it becomes overcooked. So always just dial it back in these kind of squash dish. Dial it back just a couple of minutes um, and know that the carryover cooking will get it to that bite that you want it to get it to, okay? So we got a nice little saute going here. Ooh, that's hot. The color on that squash just really just starts to pop, especially when it's just fresh from the garden. And you see, I don't want that to go gray on me. I want that to stay vibrant, okay? All the while, just remembering that we didn't need oil for this. That's kind of, that's a new revolutionary thing for me, so I'm gonna keep mentioning it. <laughs> All right. At this point, my sauce is a little thick and I already know that beforehand, it's a bit of a concentrate. So I'm gonna go ahead and deglaze my pan. Take that opportunity to kind of take any little color off the bottom again and have all that flavor just translate. Rather than getting flavor from fat, we're just getting it from the sugars that have caramelized at the bottom of the pan. 
and still incorporating lots of richness and stuff to there. That right there, you can salt and pepper and it's like a delicious meal right there, right? So we have our beautiful cashew cream. Hopefully you guys can get that. Super rich, super thick and concentrate. And I'm only gonna need for this amount, about a cup, if that. So we're just gonna swirl it, swirly whirly. Now you can make these thin and soupy. You can make it super thick and stewy. It's really just up to you. I'm kind of wanting to find a place in between. Like I could serve it on a plate, but the liquid will still come out of it rather than having it to go in a bowl. Just for my personal preference, no other reason. Okay, there won't be a, a lot of seasoning adjustment because the sauce itself has all that um, concentrate of flavor. Remember the nutritional yeast, the onion, the garlic, the salt, the pepper. Um, so it doesn't need that much. I'm gonna take my verdolaga and we're just gonna finish with this beautiful green, fresh herbs. It might even feel a little too rich and when that happens, you can always adjust with like a touch of lemon juice to cut through that fattiness and to just give it just a clean palate. I've uh, officially turned off my flame. I'm gonna add a little bit more of my crema. And a little more of my water. Like I said, I'm using water just to show how simple you could be with this. If you have vegetable broth and vegetable stock, you can do that, that's great, you know? Um, but you could also make it really good with just some water from the tap, okay? It's nothing, you know, nothing too hard. So that's going real quick, let's get some aromatics together. So let's use some of that thyme from my garden. If I had cilantro right now, I'd be using cilantro, but we don't, and it's okay. So I'm gonna use some fresh thyme. I'm gonna use some fresh Italian parsley. I'm gonna put a little comino because my grandma always put comino in her calabacitas and they were the bomb. Get this together. Now when you're working with fresh herbs, I always recommend that you put that in at the end of your dish, not at the beginning because all their little natural oils will just dissipate as you cook and you kind of lose the whole reason, all that freshness that you're trying to bring in, you lose it. Whereas if it's a dry herb, you put that in the beginning to pull the flavors out. Parsley, these stems are kind of tender, so I'm gonna use them. I don't wanna waste them. Okay, so we got all these beautiful herbs that we're gonna rely on to give us our aromatics that's gonna help de uh, put some depth in the flavor to where you don't miss the fat, you don't miss the animal product. It's just good as it stands. And if you see, it's a lot. Like there's a lot of herbs in there and that's kind of a, something I've learned over time with this kind of cooking is you could just really pump that up and all you're doing is pumping the nutrition that that particular herb has to give, right? And it just pumps it up and makes it yummy. All right, so we're looking pretty solid here. You can give it a little tasty. Make sure it's not poisonous, guys. It's not, it's super fresh. It does need a little seasoning though. I'll put a little more salt. Okay, pinch of white pepper, black pepper's fine too. More comino. More nooch. And if I was using vegetable stock, I probably wouldn't have had to do that as much. A 
me see real quick. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about that. All right. So uh, this is dinner for sure. I have it to where it's more like a, kind of like a Southern creamed vegetable. Like you do cream spinach or cream corn. That's kind of what this emulates, but you can make it more of a sopita, make it thinner and make it nicer. Uh, not nicer, but uh, nice and like soupy, brothy type of feel. I was just feeling it kind of like this today, so. All right, and at this point, you're pretty good to go. You could take some of those pretty little verdolaga leaves, let people know what they're eating, and then they can get uh, some fresh bits and cooked bits, and then it just gives you variety, which our palates love, right? And then a little, tiny bit of fresh thyme that I'm just gonna kind of press between my fingers. Again, just kind of introducing flavors that are in there already. And then a little bit more of that nooch because I have a problem and I use too much of it. There we go. And you use a big spoon because it's chunky. I think I would eat that, guys. I also think I would sell it. And this is a lot of the stuff that you'll find over here at One Grub. Um, simple ingredients, done with care. Um, we look at things like special diets, like oil-free diets. Um, we look at things like gluten-free and local food and just want to make sure that it's accessible to anybody, whether they have money or not. And so this could very well be on next week's menu because it's kind of good. Thank you. Good time just to look at the garden you know let's check things out if you look to the right this is one of our pomegranate trees we actually have three pomegranate trees we have three fig trees and um two persimmon a peach apple and that's just trees alone Firstly, we we're just talking about it it uh it grows in everybody's yard so they pluck it and throw it in the compost or the trash or whatever we actually cultivate it and really take care of it and use it in our salads. So today we're gonna do like a creamy verdolaga and squash from the garden um, with a cashew cream. And this is what we're gonna be using. So we'll check it out. She's a pretty one. And there we go. We got that. We have a couple here because this guy kind of matured early. So it's so small, you can't do much with it, but I'm gonna cut it open and if we can use it and eat it, we'll definitely eat it.